Hey guys and welcome back to the Tinkering Corner. So today I want to show you guys a project that I've been working on for a couple of weeks. This is a new CNC machine that I've been working on. It's version 3 of basically all the CNC machines that I have been um, building in the past I would say 6 months or a year. So if you haven't seen the machines that I built before the version 1 and version 2 um, you can see them right now And now that that's done, we can get back into this machine. This is basically version 3. It, it is not complete yet. I don't have the Y axis working right now, but I have the board connecting to the back and I have the power supply all at the back just to keep it uh, neat because I don't have basically anywhere else to put it in the frame. But anyways, basically I'm building this CNC machine in order to create PCBs so I have a motor that I'm gonna use and I'm gonna mount it in the C-axis then the C-axis is gonna ride on the X-axis and then we have the um, Y-axis so so far I have the Y-axis working I have designed already the X-axis but I'm still printing some of the parts for it and also I have to mount some of the parts to the frame um, the the board that I have there, right there, is at the back. I'm gonna show show you later, and it's an Arduino Uno with a, a board that I actually did a little review and setup before, which is the CNC board for the Arduino Uno. It's a CNC shield, and you can connect it basically to 12 volts or whatever your motor is run at, and then from there connect to your your stepper motors and so on which is actually pretty handy it's, it, and it's extremely small so if you want to do a very simple CNC machine you can actually get away with it you can also control a spindle if if you use a little transistor I'm, I'm sure you can actually use an, an H-bridge configuration type of sort of thing and control the two the motion of the motor in the two directions but anyways I want to show you that this actually works so here I have my trusty Logitech controller that I have had since like 2010 and I'm gonna show you well, I'm gonna show you that it actually moves I can actually jog it from here so I can go back it's I think in steps of 10 millimeters So uh, this, for now, the the Y axis is so far. It has at least like uh, 220 millimeters of travel, or a little bit more. I don't remember very well. I have to do the testing. And basically, what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna be designing a 3D printing 3D printed clamp that goes over this part, and from there, I'm gonna be able to uh, mount these PCB boards that you can buy that are double sided and then I'll be able to drill them and also uh, I'll be able to carve them as well so I'm still it's still a work, a work in progress so I can bear, basically change whatever I want or brace anything that is wobbly and so on but yeah I can also um, move the X axis which is uh, this motor right here you can see it's moving in in steps of 10 millimeters and also I can move the the c-axis which is this one over here I'm not sure if you can hear the but I am um, right now currently printing some other parts for this as well but yeah I mean it's it's really nice uh, uh, it's getting confused 
it's really nice that I uh, that I'm that it's it's working so far. Um, so some things that I would like to change later on is basically be able to have instead of this whole thing just be able to have just one plate that is uh, either a CNC plate or just a laser cut plate of wood or, or I don't know maybe wood I'll say plywood maybe two sheets of plywood to put together and, and I don't know bolt it together or something as long as it's straight uh, yeah I'm, I'm still trying to basically figure out a lot of the things along the way for example uh, something that I came up, came up with um, that is actually working pretty well it's uh, I'm sure you're not, be, you're not gonna be able to see this but it's the uh, the way in which I'm holding the belt so the way in which I'm holding the belts is basically it's this little thing I'm gonna show you guys but it's this little part where one side you, you can you can take this part and screw it into the the main thingy here the main frame of the tensioner for the belt and then you can zip tie one side and then the other you can you can pull it tight and then just screw it in place so it never basically moves but you also if, if you want to just easily remove the belts you can also just unscrew it and it will just come out I'm gonna show you guys later so you can see so uh, enough of talking and let's see at least the back of the frame so far okay so this is the back of the frame so as you can see I have here the CNC shield for the Arduino Uno the Arduino Uno is connected back here and I have the normal Polulu stepper motor drivers I have them all connected here let me see so you can see uh, and I'll say this is the y-axis this is the uh, x-axis this is the c-axis and this is the other axis Let, let's say if you if you have a machine that needs two stepper motors for the for one axis what you can do is actually let's say for example if it's the y-axis you can actually mirror um, the this this stepper driver to be also the same one so you can connect the motors all together there um, you have other options here like for example the spinning spindle enable coolant enable spindle direction and so on I haven't tested out that yet um, I'm trying to see if either I make a decent enough mesh bridge and and connect it and test it out and see if it works or um, or just use a transistor and just um, have it just run only one way I, I'm I'm still trying to figure that out I'm not sure if I'm gonna need it to run both ways so also here is the death the death traps which I almost uh, touch when I was moving the CNC to the other direction um, that's basically connected to this cord here which is connected to an extension cord uh, nothing too fancy there I don't have it connected <coughs> I don't have it connected to ground yet I should connect um, a wire towards this frame so it can ground the whole frame that should be a good idea which I will do soon because I don't want to get electrocuted but yeah I mean that's pretty much it for the back you can find this um, this little boards uh, for very cheap for like maybe at max $15 I did a video I'm gonna link it I'm, I did a video about this ones this one I got from from so C Y L tech this power supply is an old 150 watts 12 volt power supply that uh, another 3d printer that I bought before that I'm not gonna even speak about uh, came with it's a, just a cheap power supply and it, it just does a trick it should be good enough for what I'm what I'm doing uh, since it since this doesn't take as much power as, as a 3d printer but yeah man I want to show you guys now the bottom of so you can see the how the belts are set up and so on so I'll be right back and I'm gonna show you guys what I have there
so now this is the bottom of the of the machine basically this is the the y-axis only and here we have the belts coming in this is what I was talking about before this little part is the part that allows me to tension the belts here and if I can find my screwdriver I can show you guys how it works so basically you can loosen it a little bit not even the whole way and this one I have just you know here because I'm testing still but you can basically pull it and then it releases the belt like that uh, so you always have basically one side connected and the other side that you're able to tension so basically you can just pull the whole belt and then when you feel that extension then you can just uh, take your screwdriver and screw it in place and then it just stays there and then if you have some slack you can either tie it here or just cut it um, in my case because I'm just doing some testing right now I'm just I just have it uh, tied there because I don't know what I'm gonna be doing so hopefully like later on when I when I when I decide what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna cut it and that's it but pretty good um, I have my holders here for the bearings they are pretty in there like I haven't had any issues with it yet even though they're supposed to have zip ties uh, I haven't put zip ties yet and it's still like rock solid like you can move the whole printer from there which is funny um, these bearings just press in place there and then you can put some zip ties and then tighten it in place in my case what I would do is just set it to the side uh, like this and then press the bearings in place and then from there put a zip tie and then tie it in place that way is better because um, you know that it's gonna run properly which if you do that without having the bearings in the carriage already you might I don't know you can you can uh, in some cases you what, what happens is that um, your bearing might be slightly twisted so it can create more noise so it's better that you basically align the bearings with respect to the to the rods where you're really gonna put it in so yeah that's that's the way better way and it doesn't it makes some noise but it's not that bad I think my bearings are basically just bad they're really old but yeah let's put this CNC back how it was before and let's run some G code so you guys can see how it operates when it's in motion when, when it's properly in motion because I was just jogging it with my controller here okay so now uh, we're like Dan Daniel back at it again with the CNC and what's gonna happen now is that uh, I'm gonna run a G code code that I wrote before and we're gonna see what happens I'm using universal g-code sender to send the uh, g-code and I might post it in the in the description so you guys can see uh, what the g-code does uh, so I'm gonna go to my computer and run it right now so there you go So what the G-code does is basically uh, it just sets specific positions for the bed and the, and the motor to go to. Uh, I'm gonna show you in the description below how it, how it looks. But it's the code that I use um, to test basic motion for the CNC. When I have the, um, the C-axis installed um, I'm also gonna add the c-axis um, to the code and also when I have my my x-axis which I don't have right now I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys how that works so so in the next video of this CNC machine we're gonna be adding the um, x-axis and maybe the c-axis I, I don't think we're gonna be adding the c-axis uh, but basically what I want to do is uh, finish the, the, 
x-axis, then finish the c-axis, then mount the the um, the tool and actually control it with the board, which I don't know how to do yet, but I'm gonna figure it out, I guess. But yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more updates.